Okay, so in this uh, quick demo I'd like to start by walking through these uh, menu items that we have. Um, this is uh, PD Artist, uh, PD Pro 8, Artist Edition, also known as PD Artist 8. Um, I'll go quickly through these menus just to become familiar with them. You see it does not have the animation menu and that's because it is the Artist Edition. So we will have some other videos that also cover the animation features and that will be the Howler, Howler Edition of PD Pro 8. Alright, so first of all, let's have a look at the file menu. Uh, that's where you can create new, uh, new, new canvas. Basically, open a new uh, project, new window, um, new uh, painting canvas, if you want to call it that. Let's go square, 640 by 640. You can also uh, use a unit calculator here if you prefer to work in inches at certain uh, DPIs, and it will tell you how many pixels you use. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, I'll just use 640 by 480, uh, 640 by four, 640 square on in this case, and uh, so it co we could go right in here and start painting. But we're still going through a few more options here. We can also open existing documents, existing images, that is, and a couple of other import mechanisms here as well. Uh, we can also load an image and then have it stored right away. That's the same thing as if we first loaded it and then went to the image menu to store it. Now, storing it doesn't save it to file. What that does is it, it, it keeps it in memory um, in a little safe placeholder. So if you do any changes here, if you do a lot of uh, painting and changes to that, and at some point uh, you don't want to go back. Or you, I mean, you could use U for undo or Control z for undo and and do all that uh, and possibly come back to the original picture but if you've done too many changes at some point it may not be able to get back to that original well if you stored it you can just click here and it will store that back it will restore it and there's a couple of other ways to use it there are some uh, ways to just grab the RGB channels individually and put them back in. You can combine this image that you have here with what's already there in a couple of ways. You can uh, paste it into the existing buffer or, or create a new buffer and, and so replace existing creating a new image. There's a lot of different choices and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But uh, just to say that we have an option here under import to actually load a JPEG image or TIFF or TARG or BMP or whatever format we can load and store that directly into a, a stored image format. There's a couple of other things here too, we'll go and explore those. Let's uh, quickly continue with our overview, the image menu. This basically covers everything uh, that's relative to the current image and it might also be relative to a layer inside that image. So if on the right side here you add another layer and in that layer you, I don't know, you, you paint something yellow and it's not covering it, as you can tell here. It's not hiding it. It's not an opaque layer that, that replaces. It's, it's, it's one for painterly use that will modify. Uh, and, and you can combine these and you have several uh, l layer modes, many layer modes. <coughs> we'll cover those in more detail as well. Uh, anyway, so, so you can go and do image transformations on these. You can resample that entire image and it will affect all of the layers. Uh, you can, uh, if you have animations, in fact, you can also do that. You can resample, you can uh, scale and so on. Um, and of course, most importantly, you can store the image. So you can store this current one here in which I have just this one little scribble on the right side. Right, that's this one here and uh, you can store this one here as well so you can switch to another layer and go and store that one so now this one here has just the uh, th the bulk of the yellow and the pink and you can hide that by turning the layer invisible and then you can also go to the the, the bottom one here layer zero which has the black line and again you can store that as well so sometimes that's a really nice feature to be able to store the individual layers separately and perhaps apply them uh, work with them in different ways um, let's move on we'll, we'll go into more detail in there uh, brush there's a whole menu here that's related related to brushes and particularly to custom brushes most of the things you see here relate to custom brushes so for instance if you go and select um, let's go put this here actually I'm going to flatten this entire image here and then put this one back in or this one hold on where's the flatten there this one Alright, so I have the entire image flattened. I'm going to put this one in, 
and I'd like to pick a portion of this as my custom brush. There's a tool in the toolbar here and there's a shortcut for that too and you can use that to pick up a portion of the image and make that the image in your brush in your brush in your custom brush right so now you can preview it PRV here will enable you to see that and it's not in full opacity so you can change the opacity here to make it a little bit more opaque and then you can stamp it down and do a variety of things and so this menu here the brush menu relates to things you can do uh, that affect the image in your brush the brush is made of uh, some sort of an image uh, in many cases and there's a, a variety of things you might uh, like to do at some point with that image uh, even uh, create an animated brush and uh, add multiple images to that brush so that if you um, if you paint something, it, it's not going to just use this one image, uh, but potentially another image that you have there too. So let's say if I store this brush, um, store and manage this image, right? And then I'll go and grab, with the pickup tool we used earlier, grab a different portion like this one. I now have this in my brush and I'm going to store that as well and store and manage it. And now I have two stored images in a brush. I have this one and I have this one. So if I click this one, I can paint with that. And if I click this one, I can paint with this one. So you see how you can manage not only images like I have here on the right side, but I can also manage brushes. And then most importantly, I can combine them. I can take this brush as my current active brush and then add it here, add this frame to this brush. Right? So now, how do I see what what's actually in the brush? In both, uh, you know, in this one, I have two images now. So if I if I look at the film strip, show film strip here, you can see that it's got two images. And let's go do that one more time. This time, I'll pick uh, this one, and um, I'll go again with the custom brush pickup tool, and I'll pick. Uh, oops, I did a double click here. There. Let's go grab it like this. So I have now this image, the pink one, in my brush, and I want to add it to this one one more time. So I add frame. And so now I have three images in my film strip. So this brush is now made of a total of three images and it's an animated brush therefore. So as I'm painting, in fact, it just needs two images to be an animated brush. When you have an animated brush, there's a lot more you can do with that image sequence. It's basically an image sequence. So we'll go into that in detail as well. Um, the animated brush where you can load sequences, save sequences, do all sorts of stuff. You can even load an AVI file. So you can, you can load an animation, a video into your brush and start painting with that. Um, and let's see what's next. There's the filter. So that's of course pretty self-explanatory. There's a lot of filters, a lot of tools to modify the picture in many different ways, including just creating or rendering something new. So for instance, under the render menu here, you could say, let's go render a sky, right? And then so you have it, let's just okay the default. Let's get rid of these other brushes. So here's a sky we just rendered. And then we could say, perhaps we want to render something else like, I don't know, cold lava and uh, go something like this and then uh, you know there's a tool up here that allows you to do an interactive undo uh, and that allows you to fade from one to the next or the prior image so the prior image was this one and then this one is the one we got with the cold lava filter and then in between maybe is what we want so you can do a nice kind of a, a fade transition this is what we call the interactive undo you have that also here under the filter um, somewhere in there anyway uh, fast or oh, fade last action that's what it is yeah so the interactive undo or fa fade last action allows you to to fade the most recent action such as for instance if I'm painting with this and you want it but you don't want it in that intensity you can go and fade the last action so you can say oh, let's go back a little bit more back to the original all right so that's the filter menu in a, <laughs> in a really quick nutshell. Uh, let's go to the selection. That's of course the magic wand and other selection tools and, and how to manipulate what's in the alpha. The selection mask is the alpha channel. Um, so we'll learn a lot. That we already have a lot of tutorials on that, you know, but so for instance, things you could do is grab some of these tools here. There is a, a, a rectangle selection. You see the marching ants going around it. You could use a circle and then you can use a shift key to add to that selection. So you do, you do an oval and now you have even a third and a fourth. So you now have a more complex shape because it's a combination of selection masks. And um, maybe we'll want to do something with that, like do an effect, like drop a shadow on that. Right. So when you drop the shadow against that outline, uh, you can see which way that shadow goes. And that can be 
quite impressive for additional highlighting mechanisms in illustration all right do uh, a couple of other things let's go and control d to uh, erase the the mask and there you go so let's see we got the selection menu and then we have the window menu ah the window menu what's that for well there's a couple of things you can change the layout um, of your graphic interface the the items on the right items on the left uh, or the floating toolbar can be a single or dual bar there's a variety of options there and then there's gradient editor, sweep editor, histogram, particles, tons of other things to explore. Some of these are legacy, we still keep them because people love them. Utilities, uh, localization, uh, wallpaper, all sorts of really cool fu uh, fun stuff to use there. And you know, eventually you'll want to explore all of that. And that's what we'll do. Uh, to finish this off, let's go to the help menu. There is a dog waffle community in the making. Not exactly a very strong environment quite yet, but uh, we're growing and uh, we are looking for ways to make this a little bit more easy for you to, to learn and to communicate and to share with others. Um, and then the we also have um, a, a manual. Now this one is based typically on I think what was version 2. So many of the features you see in the manual are uh, slightly different in appearance. The interface has changed and it doesn't cover as many features as we now have. So maybe back then we had 50 filters, now we have 120 or 140 or I don't know how many. Uh, so uh, be prepared for some uh, slight differences there and surprises. There still is also a keyboard shortcut reference. I recommend you take a look at that. When you click on that you'll see a lot of keyboard shortcuts and those are really speed uh, and uh, you know emphasizers those will make your operations much faster uh, and then finally uh, one thing you want to check for some of the filters we need the .NET framework you can check that and it confirms that you have version 4 installed and then also which version of dog waffle about artist and you'll see this is dog waffle artist 8 right and you might have the slightly different version the one that has the animation menu as well and that would be called howler 8 all right. By the way, the version number you see here is not version 3. The, the, the project is, but the main program version is 8 down here. So that's version PD Pro 8 is what this says here. And of course, our code name, internal code name was Broomhead. And that's what will confirm here that this is the right version we want to use. All right. So uh, at this point, uh, we're pretty much ready with that first walkthrough and the next videos will uh, we will just start diving into more and more details.